Uh, greetings, math fans. All right, so today we're going to do graphing polar coordinates. All right. Um, even before we get started here, we've talked about um, complex number. This is not a complex number. All right. So I know when we've been graphing and and you've been you know you had your I'm just going to write this out. You had your imaginary axis and you had your real axis. Okay, this is not a complex number. I can't stress this enough. So what you're going to see is when I say graphing polar coordinates, it's going to be in parentheses. Okay, you got to look for the parentheses because if I ask you to convert a polar coordinate to a rectangular coordinate, a rectangular polar you're going to have parentheses. It's going to be something comma something. Okay? I'm just trying to put that out there right off the bat just so you guys are uh, good to go. All right. So let's talk about what a polar coordinate is. First of all, it's r comma theta. Instead of uh, x comma y, right, x comma y, we know that as our rectangular. And this is going to be our polar coordinate. Okay? Uh, let me just write this out here again. So R is the radius, okay, and theta is the angle counter clockwise from the positive x-axis. Kind of what we've been doing before. Everything's really been from the positive x-axis when we do um, an angle. Okay, so r comma theta, and let's just talk a little bit about, let's do a couple polar coordinates here. All right, so first of all, this is what our polar axis looks like. Okay, these are circles, even though they may not look like circles. But these are all concentric circles, circles with the same center. Okay, so this is kind of what a, a polar axis looks like. Um, and this is where you have your r comma theta. So your r is your distance out from the center point. That center point, this middle point right here, is called the pole. So the pole is like the origin of an xy axis. Okay? And, you know, let's kind of plot a few points here. So if I put a point right here, okay, this point is 2 comma 45 degrees. All right, so actually when you're identifying a coordinate or plotting a coordinate, what you want to do is you want to do the angle first, and then you want to do the radius second or last, however you want to look at it, okay? Very, very important. Angle first, radius second. So if I say um, let's plot 3, 270 degrees, you're going to go to 270 degrees, which is straight down right here, and then you're going to go all three, one, two, three. And that is 3, 270. Okay, if I want you guys to plot, you know, um, let's see, uh, how about 4, 330 degrees? Then you're going to go 330 degrees, which is kind of, if I just kind of just draw a little dotted line here, it's kind of out like that. It's almost 360, but you're going to go off 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, that's 4, 330. And, you know, if I said, um, you know, 5, 180 degrees. That means 180 degrees is to the left, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that's that point right there. All right, so as I told you guys, in complex numbers, we don't have negative values because we have the angle to compensate for that. Um, in a uh, polar coordinate, we're going to have, we can have negative R values. So we can have negative R values. Okay, so let's talk about um, how can you have a negative r value. Well, let's just make a little graph right over here. Um, if I said negative three comma thirty, so negative three comma thirty degrees. Remember, what I told you to do first. Always do the angle first. So if this is thirty degrees here, what you're going to do is we're going to go just the other way. So it's 30 is aiming this way, 
but because it's negative 3, we go the other way. 1, 2, 3. And that's negative 3, comma 30 degrees. Okay. Um, let's just do another one. How about uh, negative 2, comma 90 degrees? Well, is 90 degrees straight up? So again, we identify the angle first, so that would be straight up, but it's negative, so we go the other way. So that would be negative 2, comma 90 degrees. Okay. Pretty pretty straightforward, right? Um, so let's talk a little bit about how to have uh, points that are equivalent. So this is the directions will be uh, give another coordinate that represents yeah, let's just say two comma forty five degrees. So let's just take a look at it real quickly. That's kind of a big circle, but it's okay. So two comma forty five. Do you guys agree I'm about right here? Well, what if I said, um, let's just think of something with, uh, well, first of all, can you guys, you guys agree I can do coterminal? So can I just say 2 comma and I can add 360 to that? So isn't that the same thing as saying 2 comma uh, 405 degrees, right? And I can add another 360 to that and say 2 comma uh, 7 65, right? These are all equivalent. But let's talk about negative values. Uh, this is a 45 degree angle, but also what happens if I said uh, this is 225 degrees, right? This guy right here. If I said 225, so it would be comma 225, and I would say negative 2. Do you guys agree with that? So in other words, I go 225 this way, but then I go negative 2, which brings me back to this point right here. So think about what I did. What do you do to go from, let me put in a different color here. What do you do to go from here all the way around to this line here? Don't you add 180 degrees? Oops, that's kind of weird looking. You add 180 degrees. So here's the deal. If I, I can add 180 degrees, but can I go the other way too? And I, can I subtract 180 degrees? Ooh. Okay, so if I actually now came up with different values here, I could say, right, plus, I could say, so let's look at that. If I had that 2, 2 comma 45, I could add 180 degrees and change the sign. So if I add 180, I get 225. And watch this. What if I add another 80, so this is plus 180. What if I add another 180 to that? I, and I change the sign. I get 2 comma, if I add 180, I get um, 405, right? Ooh, look at that. It's the same thing. So here's the deal. Okay, so let's, let's do a general rule here, math fans. General rule. Okay, it sounds like the, the uh, army. Um, if you have a, a coordinate, you can add or subtract 360 degrees, right? and you keep the same sign for R. Okay, um, I can add and subtract 180 degrees and you change the sign for R. That's all it is, Matt fans. That's all you do. Okay, so let's just, you know, try another one here. How about, uh, Let's just do 100 degrees. So how about uh, 5 comma 100 degrees? Well, isn't that the same thing as negative 5 comma? When I add 180 to that, 280 degrees. Add another 180 to get 100 degrees, 180 degrees, and I get 5 comma, and I, um, I get 460 degrees. All right? I can even, I can go, this guy here, I can say minus 5, and if I subtract 180 from... Um, 100 degrees, I get negative 80 degrees, right? I could do that too. So these are all equivalent values. But remember, you add and subtract 360, you keep the same sign for R, because what this basically is coterminal. Okay? And this guy is uh, just changing the sign, so it's not really anything. It's, you know, just 
going 180 degrees around and changing the sign for R. Okay? Pretty easy. Uh, the only thing I want to uh, show you also is you can have, let's clear this out of here, you can also have things in radians. So if I have negative 2 comma pi over 3, right? Uh, well, of course, we're going to add, it's the same rule. We add and subtract 2 pi, and you keep the same sign. And you can add and subtract pi, which is 180 degrees, and you change the sign. Of course, this is 4r, right? So if I want to do coterminal, I can change the sign and add 3 pi over 3, which is pi. So I get 4 pi over 3. Okay, I can add, so I can go negative back to negative 2 and add another pi, so 7 pi over 3. If I went directly from here to here, it's like adding 6 pi over 3, right? Which is 2 pi, which of course is correct. 2 pi plus pi over 3 is 7 pi over 3, and we keep the same sign. Okay, so just, you know, kind of watch watch your radians. If it's in radian mode, you just add and subtract pi or 2 pi, and depending, and then change the sign, of course, it's just pi. And if it's degrees, you add and subtract 180, change the sign, uh, add and subtract 360, keep the same sign. Okay? So that is polar coordinates. Let's talk about converting coordinates. All right, so converting coordinates. Um, what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to remember a couple different things here. Let's just review this real quickly. If I have a uh, 30, 60, 90 triangle, um, remember across the 30 is x, across from the 60 is x root 3, and across from the 90 is 2x. Because remember, people born in the 60s are radical, so that's why they get the root 3. And plus, there are three different angles, so it gets the root 3. And then let's do the other one here. Uh, 45, 45, 90. Okay, and so this is going to be x, x, x root 2. Okay? Um, and just kind of a little helpful thing here when you're doing these problems, especially the 4590. Let's do a 45, 45, 90. If this is uh, 6 and this is 6, this is easy. It's 6 root 2. It's where it gets a little more difficult is when I give you, you know, um, let's say this is 4. Well, remember this is x root 2 equals 4 because there are two different angles. That's just a way to remember it. And then if I rationalize, or I have to solve, so I divide both sides by root 2 over root 2. So I get 4 over root 2, which is, and then I rationalize that, multiply by root 2 over root 2, which is 4 root 2 over 2, which is equal to 2 root 2. So uh, each of these is 2 root 2. And just an easy way to remember that, if it's, if that's always the bigger number. Hypotenuse is always the biggest number, and basically what you do is you just take half of that number and then you put a root 2 after it. So, you know, just if I give you this guy here, and this is going to be, again, 45, 45, 90, I'm just going to mark it that way. And I said this is, um, you know, this is 10. So what are these guys? It's half of it, root 2. Half of it, root 2. I mean, you could solve for it. I'm just trying to show you a little bit quicker way. And remember, if I told you, if I gave you this, you know, this is uh, 20 and this is 20. And there's no barely any work. That's x, that's x, and this is x root 2. That's easy. It's just the other way. Try one more here. All right? This is, uh, you know, uh, f if I said this is 50, well, what's half of 50? It's 25. So 25 root 2. 25 root 2. Okay? So just kind of recalling a little bit about uh, 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90 triangles. So here's the deal. Um, let's go from um, polar to rectangular. That's what all these examples are going to be. That means you're going to go from r comma theta. That's going to be given to x comma y. Okay, and I'll tell you, um, a picture is huge, math fans. So, picture, and I'm going to highlight this baby because you need to draw a picture. Okay, most success is drawing a good picture. So here's the first example, uh, four comma thirty degrees. So. I make a sketch. I'm looking for an x, y coordinate now. So, but you know, 430. You just label everything. 
30 degrees is your angle here, theta, and 4 is your radius, r. So it's, it's a 36 90 triangle, and you're just going to put it all together here. Well, if that's 4, what's across from the 30? Isn't it, right, isn't 2x equal to 4, so x is equal to 2? And then what's across from, this is 60 here, right? And that's uh, people born in 60 are radical, so it's 2 root 3. So guess what? That's my x-coordinate, that's my y-coordinate. So my answer to this problem in rectangular is going to be 2 root 3 comma 2. It's like so easy. Okay, another key thing here, so I'm going to draw a key, that's a key, is you have to watch your signs. Okay, I cannot stress that enough. You've got to watch your signs because I mean, this one was really nice. This was in the first quadrant, but you're, I'm going to give you stuff all over the place, and if you don't put the signs on there, you're going to lose a point for that. It's brutal points to lose, math fans. Okay, so I have another example here. Um, 6, 135 degrees. So, you know, that's pretty easy to sketch, right? We know it's a, a 45 degree reference angle because 135, and we know we're in this quadrant here. You guys have done this enough. So this is 45 degrees, and this radius is 6. Remember what I told you, if that's a 6 over there, each of these guys is half. So it's 3 root 2 and 3 root 2. Now, if you have that on your answer, you think that's right, boo! All right, there's, we're missing one thing. So I'm going to put this in red because it's really important. This guy is negative. The x coordinate is negative because we're in the second quadrant, right? So don't forget that. So your answer to this in rectangular is negative 3 root 2 comma 3 root 2. Right? Really pretty easy. Just watch your signs. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's do another one here. Um, again, it's going to be another polar coordinate. So negative 4 comma 60 degrees. Brutal! Brutal! We have a negative uh, R value. What well, you know what I'm going to do? I, I really don't like dealing with negative values because it just makes it a little more challenging to sketch. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to convert this as we learned previously to something positive. So how about if I change this to 4 comma and then what do you add to that 60? Well you add 180 degrees. So it's 4 comma 240. Okay, that's a lot easier to deal with because then when I sketch this um, I know 240 is down here, right, because 270 is right here. And um, what's the reference angle? It's, well it's 240 minus 180 is 60 degrees and this is 4. All right, so this is across from the right angle, so that means 2x equals 4. That means across from the 30, it's 2, and across from the 60, it's 2 root 3. Of course, what can't you forget here, math fans? Don't forget these are both negative because we're in the third quadrant. And so my answer to this problem is negative 2 comma negative 2 root 3. Okay, that's not bad. Let's, uh, how about this one here? Um, just another example. Uh, 7 comma 90 degrees. Well, math fans, there's no triangle to be drawn. We're right here. We're over in this spot here. So if there's no triangle, what is that rectangular coordinate? Okay, again, there's no triangle, so if I, if I just had you, had you plot that and that was a length, this distance here was 7, right? What would the coordinate that be? Well, what's the x value? Isn't x 0 because x is left and right? And what's y? 7. So the answer to this one is 0 comma 7. Okay? It's pretty easy, right? All right. Um, let's do another problem now uh, with rectangular to polar. All right. Um, it's just as easy. In, in the, making a sketch is still key here, math fans. So let's do our first example. Um, it's 6 root 3 comma negative 6. Okay, well, let's make a sketch. Um, it's positive uh, x and negative y, so we know we're in this quadrant here. Let's just label it. So this is 6 root 3, and this is negative 6. Okay, and what kind of triangle is it? Well, you see the root 3 there. It's a 30, 60, 90, and, and so um, it's across from the non-root. So do you guys agree that this is 30 degrees here? Because this one across from here is the 60, right? Because people born in the 60s are radical. And then, of course, if that's 6 across from the 30, what's across from the 90? Uh, it's double that. So you guys agree that's 12. So the th two things I need here, math fans, I need this guy right here, I need this guy right here, because I need r comma theta. But don't forget, 
That's just great that we got that 30 degrees, but this is what I'm looking for. That 30 is our reference angle. So you need to know that your angle, theta, is actually going to be, well, it's in the fourth quadrant, so it's 360 minus 30, which is 330 degrees. Okay? So that, that's truly what your R value is, or your theta is. And then, well, R is easy. It's 12. So my answer to this problem is uh, 12, 330 degrees. All right? Not too bad. Uh, let's try another one here. How about negative 4, comma, 4? Well, isn't that over here? Negative 4 and 4. Well, we know they're the same, so this is a 45, 45, 90. So this is 45 degrees. So if that's, remember these are x, x, and this is x root 2. This is actually easy to, to get the hypotenuse here. That's just 4 root 2. So if 45 degrees is your reference angle, then what's that, isn't that theta 135 degrees? Sweet! So your answer is um, 4 root 2, which is your R, comma, 135. This is a common mistake that people do. Remember I told you, I mentioned this right at the beginning, make sure you use parentheses, okay, because parentheses, they're so key. This is what a common mistake people do. People go, oh, it's 4 root 2, cis 135 degrees. Boo! This is, this is a complex number. Guys, do you see this right here? There's a parenthesis and there's a parenthesis. In the original problem, I said negative 4, comma 4. You better have these parentheses here in your answer. This guy right here has no parentheses, no parentheses. That's why you do not use cis on there, okay, co cosine imaginary sine. Got to use those parentheses. That's why it's just so important. Please don't mess that up. All right, um, let's do a couple more conversions here. Um, negative 3, comma, 0. So let's graph negative 3, comma, 0. 1, 2, 3, and it's right here, right? Again, I'm plotting x, this is x, comma, y. And what is that in polar? Well, it's going all the way around. Isn't that 180 degrees? And what's r? r equals 3. Please don't tell me it's negative 3. You're, you're doing 180 degrees, and you're saying r is 3. So it's 3, 180. Isn't that, if I actually graph that, wouldn't you go 180 degrees and then you go out 1, 2, 3? Remember I said do the angle first? So don't get confused and go, oh, it's 180 degrees and then make it negative 3. You could do this, negative 3, 0, because you go 0, which means you go this way, right? And then you go down back 1, 2, 3. And that would be okay as well. All right? How about um, one last one? How about 0, comma, negative 5? Well, where is that? One, two, three, four, five. We're down here. And so what is our angle? Well, it's 270 degrees. And what's R? Well, R is this distance here. R is 5. So my answer to this one is 5, 270. Okay? That's pretty mellow, right? It's not, not bad uh, to do the uh, you know all these different conversions here. Okay? All right, um, now what I want to do is I want to do uh, converting equations. A little bit different than converting coordinates. Um, a couple things, let's develop one thing real quickly. If I have cosine of theta, do you guys remember this is almost from like day one of trig. Cosine of theta is equal to x over r. And if I cross multiply, I get x equals r cosine of theta. Same thing if I do sine of theta is equal to y over r, because y sin, you get um, y equals r sine of theta. Okay, math fans, can you put some boxes around this, uh, or on your paper? Those are huge, huge. These are all, what's tangent of theta equal to? Our good friend, the yox, look in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. The x, okay? And this is the other one, x squared plus y squared. Right, when you did your, your picture here, if this was x and this was y, it's a right triangle. So what is that? Pythagorean theorem, right? And that's r, so it's x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So these are important as well. So put boxes around those. Those four are very, 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 very important. 
Okay, so um, let's start out with uh, some examples here. I want to go. We're going to go rectangular to polar. That means you're going to see x's and y's, and you're going to rewrite that with r's and thetas. You might have a little, might have one or the other, uh, or both. Um, but you need to have r's and thetas in, in your answer when you go rectangular to polar. So uh, my first example is going to be um, x equals five. Well, look at the look at you see you have x equals r cosine of theta, so r cosine of theta equals five. Solve for r. So r equals five over cosine of theta, but what is co one over cosine of theta? Isn't it secant? So r equals five secant of theta. If you could not have a fraction, that's what you want. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for. R is equal to five secant of theta. All right, let me clear this out of here and keep going with a few more. How about um, y equals negative four? Well, uh, what's y? R sine of theta. Y sin equals negative four. Well, divide by sine of theta. So r is equal to, well, one over sine of theta is cosecant, so it's negative four cosecant of theta. Sweet, that's it. Okay, here's another one. How about x squared plus y squared equals 49? Well, that's so, that's easy. It's r squared equals 49. So take the square root of both sides, and what do you get? r is equal to plus or minus 7. Because think of it. Isn't this a circle, math fans? Right? It's a circle. You learned it last year. x squared plus y squared equals 49. And what is r? If I said r is equal to 7, that means the radius is 7 all the way around. So, of course... Looking back at the original equation, isn't 49 r squared, the radius squared, which is 7? No, same thing as that. Okay? Okay, my next example is x squared plus y squared minus 4y equals 0. So x squared plus y squared is r squared, and f minus 4y is r sine of theta. Okay, because y sin, right? Okay, um, what I can do now is I can move this over and I get r squared equals 4r sine of theta. And then I can divide both sides by r. Now you truly can't do this when you're actually solving something because you lose a root here, you lose a variable, but I'm just writing an equivalent expression here. So r is equal to um, 4 sine of theta. That's it. Okay. Um, we got a few more here. How about uh, 2x minus y equals 5? Well, again, you're just substituting for x. So you have 2r cosine of theta minus r sine of theta equals 5. Well, here I can't divide everything by r because I have the 5 here, but I can factor the r out. So 2 cosine of theta minus sine of theta equals 5 and then divide both sides by 2 cosine theta minus sine of theta. Okay, so your answer is 5 over 2 cosine theta minus sine theta. Now here's the deal, math fans. I know some of you are saying, Mr. Curvis, um, you got a cosine of theta, and you can move that to the top, and you can write secant, and you got the sine, you can write cosecant, but that's adding and subtracting. You can't do that. You can't just move, if it's if it was literally just 5 over cosine of theta, then I can, it's beautiful. I can write 5 times secant of theta, but there is adding and subtracting between them, so I can't just bring both of them up. So that is actually your final answer. Okay? All right, and then I got one more I want to do here. Let's move this down a little bit. Um, y is equal to the uh, square root of 3 times x. Um, what I guys want you to understand is I can divide, and this is a little tricky, I can divide, divide both sides by x, and I get y over x equals root 3. What is y over x? Ooh, tangent of theta, it's the yax. And now, please don't leave this as the answer. Your, the question is, the tangent of what is root 3? Okay, well, the threes don't rule there, right? So isn't theta equal to 60 degrees? 
That's your answer, math fans. Now, some of you might say, well, Mr. Curvis, there, are, there could be more than one, right? Isn't it 60 degrees here, but can it also be here? Can't you say 180 plus 60 and say 240 degrees? And you know what I say to that? Oh, yeah, that's another answer. In fact, there's an infinite number of answers. I can now, I can keep adding, um, you know, 180 degrees to that, basically. I can, if I do another 180 degrees, it's coterminal to 60, right? I can, or I can add 360 to the 60 and get 420. So I'm saying there's an infinite number of answers, but I just want one answer. And usually the first answer in this quadrant, unless, of course, it's negative, then you would tell me 180 minus 60, which gives you 120 degrees, right? Okay? So, um, okay, one more thing to do here. It's kind of a long lesson, but there's a lot of stuff here. Um, I want to go from uh, polar to rectangular equations. All right? So basically what you, you want to look to get r sine of theta and change that to y and r cosine of theta and you want to change that to x. Okay, that's what you're looking for. So uh, if I have, first example here, if I have r sine of theta is equal to 8. Well, that's like really easy schmeasy. r sine of theta is y, so my answer is y equals 8. That was really easy. Okay, uh, this one's not quite as friendly. How about r equals 8 sine of theta? Well, what do you do with that? I, 8 sine of theta, I don't really see what I can do here, but how do I do this? How if I multiply both sides by r? I get r squared equals 8r sine theta. Okay, I can do a lot with that now. r squared is x squared plus y squared. And 8r sine of theta is the same thing as 8y. Okay, you can't leave it like that. You guys should move it over. It's x squared plus y squared minus 8y equals 0. And I should complete the square. Okay, this is completing the square for a circle. You should recognize this as a circle because you have an x squared, y squared. Uh, it's positive between them. And it's the same, they have the same coefficient. Okay. And so anyway, complete the square. I take half of the y value, which so half of negative 8, which is negative 4, I'm going to put a little box around that, and square it. That gives me 16. So truly, I want to add 16 to both sides. So add 16 to that side. So what I get is x squared plus y squared minus 8y plus 16 equals 16. Now, see this guy right here? The reason I had you guys put that box around there is because that's what goes inside of the parentheses with the y, y minus 4 squared. Okay? When you take half of it, that number goes inside of it, and then you, but you have to square it to give you the number to add it to both sides. Um, anyway, that's equal to 16. Uh, and this, math fans, is actually your final answer. Okay? And you should, you should recognize it's a circle. But it needs to be in standard form, which is you know, uh, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. You guys should remember that from Algebra 2. Okay? A um, couple more here. Okay? It's, you know, it takes, takes a lot of practice. Um, we have r is equal to negative 5 secant of theta. Well, that's kind of complicated. In math fans, if I had to multiply both sides by r, you're going to get negative 5r secant of theta. That doesn't do anything for us. We need either sine or cosine. So watch this. How about if I rewrite this? Negative 5 over what's 1 or secant of theta is 1 over cosine. Oh, yeah. And then I can do this. It still doesn't don't multiply, but I can cross multiply. So you get r cosine of theta equals negative 5. All right, and what's r cosine of theta? Oh, yeah, it's x. x equals negative 5. That's your answer. Okay, here's another example. R equals 8. Square both sides. So you get R squared equals 64. And what's, X squ what's R squared? It's X squared plus Y squared. There we go. That's it. Right? So there's another circle. All right. How about, um, oh, here's a good one. Theta is equal to pi over 6. 
Well, that's a line, isn't it? Well, we kind of did that one before a little bit. I kind of recognize it. Well, here, I, this is what I can do. How if I take the tangent of both sides? Sweet. What's tangent of theta? Y over X. What's tangent of pi over 6? Well, isn't that 30 degrees? Three's rule there, baby. So it's root 3 over 3. The last step is multiply both sides by X. So you get Y equals root 3 over 3X. And it truly is a line. The slope is root 3 over 3. Okay? And I can do one more here. How about theta is equal to 7 pi over 4? Same thing. Take the tangent of both sides. So y over x. Well, 7 pi over 4, you guys know it's in this quadrant here. What's tangent of anything pi over 4? It's 1. But in co of course, it's over here, it's negative 1. Multiply both sides by x. I get y equals negative x. Which, think about it, math fans. Isn't 7 pi over 4 here, but it's also here? And look at that, what's the equation of that line? Y equals negative X. Okay, and that's also, these are all lines here. So, like I said, that was kind of a lot of stuff here. Um, we did, uh, I introduced polar coordinates. Uh, we converted polar to rectangular, rectangular to polar, and then we did polar, rectangular, rectangular to polar for equations. So, it's a lot of stuff. It's about 40 minutes, but you got to know how to do all that stuff. So, lots of examples, and hopefully you guys know what you're doing here. All right? Adios, math fans. Bye-bye.